Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. My name is Dylan and today we're going to be doing another in-depth color grading tutorial. And I'm really excited for this one today because we are going to be going over the kind of military action grade that you'll see a lot in Hollywood movies. Even if this is a grade you don't think you'll be using often, I think the process can kind of help you to feel more comfortable with grading in the software. We will be using Color Finale 2 to grade these, but almost everything we do today you can do with Final Cut Pro's native color grading tools. Okay, so the two shots we're going to be using today are from ArtGrid. And before we start, I want to give a big thank you to ArtGrid because I not only happen to have my hard drive break on me, which has the majority of footage I use to make these color grading videos, but I'm also in lockdown here in Saigon, Vietnam, so I can't really even go outside to get more clips. So they've really helped out, and if you guys want to follow along, you can start a free trial, download the clips, I'll put the name of the clips in the description, or you can uh, buy a membership with them and grade whenever you want. So this is log footage, and the first thing we're going to do with log footage is convert it to a Rec. 7 709 color space. So we can manually do that and we can also add what is called an input LUT or a normalization LUT. And in Color Finale they make it easy. They give you an option to just click Assume Log and Color Finale automatically uh, guesses how much contrast and saturation to add to your image. It's not always perfect though, it's not as perfect as if you have a LUT that is uh, meant to convert your long footage to Rec. 709. And usually you can find those LUTs for whatever camera you use on the camera manufacturer's website. So if you shoot in say S-Log, you can find an S-Log to Rec. 709 LUT that will easily convert that and add that contrast and saturation back into your image. So I'm actually not going to, to use this now. I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. So I'm gonna open up my layers panel and I'm gonna pull up my color wheels. All I'm gonna do is go to my gain wheel or my gain section over here, which is my highlights. And what I wanna do is expand my dynamic range by raising my highlights. And then I'm gonna go to my lift, which is my shadows. And I'm gonna lower my shadows a bit. And I actually may leave it just right about there. And later on, I can adjust my contrast a little bit more if I want a kind of a different look. I may bring down my midtones just a tad and then increase my saturation a bit. And this is um, now converted to a Rec. 709 color space. And the next step in the color grading process after you convert your log footage is color correcting your shot. So uh, we can tell that this shot is off color by bringing up our RGB overlay. And you can notice that a lot of our colors are very separated from each other. They're not that balanced. And in this instance, we should have colors that are a little bit closer together. We can make them closer together by opening up our curves and pulling out some of the colors that there's too much of, like red and green right here, and adding more blue back into the shot. We can use the temperature and tint slider, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it manually just in case you want to learn. So, like I said, pull out some red. So I'm gonna go to my red curve and decrease the red in my overall image just by pulling on the center for the most part and just dragging some out. And now a little bit of green shows up because we took out some red. So I'm gonna go to my green curve and do the same here. Just pull a little bit out here. And um, the next thing you'll do is add some blue back into the shot. So I'll push some blue up and try and find it about even on this, uh, on this RGB overlay. So if I bring this down and back up, You'll see how that kind of blue waveform, that blue waveform kind of converges with those other co other colors. And that tells us that our shot is balanced. So I actually may decrease my the brightness of my shadows a little bit by using my Luma curve. And if I turn this off and on, you'll see that our shot is balanced. What that means is our shot is just accurate to what our eyes would uh, actually see if we were in here in this Humvee or this car with uh, these soldiers. And this makes it easier to color grade later on. When you have all of your shots that are a, a base level, that, that are a same grade, it makes it much easier to match different shots and to, to stylize in general. So there we go. Color corrected our shot really easily. You can also use the temperature and the tint slider to get it a little bit more accurate if you want. The next thing we're gonna do is start creating our look. So I'm going to open up another Curves although I could use my color wheels. And what I'm gonna do is start increasing some green into our shot. 
since we kind of want that green war look. And if you push up on one of these curves, it means you are adding more of that color into the shot. So by me going at the very bottom of the curve, I'm pushing more green into my shadows, a little bit into the midtones, and the highlights are kind of staying the same. And to kind of keep the midtones at an even level, I'm gonna pull down on the uh, highlight section, which is gonna take out some of that green in the highlights and kind of keep the midtones in the same area. You see, it's kind of like a, an anchor point in the middle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the red curve. And that's because generally you want to have two opposing, two or more opposing colors in your shot to allow for a lot of color separation. That's going to give you contrast. And so for us in this instance, it's green and kind of red and magenta that's going to contrast each other. So I'm going to do the reverse here. I'm going to pull uh, down on my red curve. That's going to be decreasing the red in my shadows which means adding a little bit of green in the shadows, and then do the same thing up top, adding a little bit of red into my, uh, into my highlights. And then what I'm gonna do to kind of tweak my midtones a little bit so they're a little bit more accurate, is I'm gonna go to my green curve and just pull down, not dead center, but a little bit lower than center, kind of like lower midtones because that is where his skin is lying uh, exposure wise. And we can tell that if I pull up my image analysis and ellipse, um, it's kind of hard because his, he's wearing that mask. But if I just kind of put that there, you'll see that um, for someone of his complexion, he should be lying generally above 50. However, this uh, was shot inside a car. So anything above 25 is going to be uh, probably pr accurate is going to be what we want. So what I may do is let's take this off. I'm going to pull down on my green curve. That's going to adjust the color of the midtones of the lower midtones a little bit and add some uh, red back into the image. And uh, I also may increase the exposure on my midtones since I want to bring his skin up a tad and then I will pull down on my shadows by adjusting right here. That's just gonna add a little bit more contrast while keeping the midtones at a decent exposure. And uh, let me see if I can play with this and maybe, no, I'm gonna leave that as is. We won't touch the blue curve for now. So let me, let me rename these. Contrast saturation, it was logged to Rec. 709 basically. The next one was our color correction. And this is one of the reasons why I love color finale is because you can group different layers, you can name different layers, it just makes everything really easy. And then this one is your look. So a really quick review, we have long to rec 709, color correction, and then we have our introduction of our look. So let's start tweaking things a little bit. I'm going to open up a six vectors, head to the red vector, and this is really nice because skin will usually lie in this vector. So if I just swing this hue, you'll see it adjusts his skin. And what I'm gonna do is desaturate his skin a little bit because that goes well with the grade. It goes well with the type of grade we're going for. And that's just lowering the amount of saturation here in this red vector. And then I'm gonna raise the luminosity, which is the brightness of that red vector. And that's just gonna make his skin pop a little bit more, make it pop out of the mask, make it kind of a focus of the shot. And let's name, let's name that uh, skin adjustment. Next, we're, you're gonna clean up your shadows and your highlights. So uh, because we pushed a lot of green into our shadows, uh, I think actually our highlights are generally okay, but because we pushed a lot of green into our shadows, we now need to take out some of that saturation in the darkest areas because that's not natural. So I'm gonna hit the insert HSL curves I'm gonna to go to Sat versus Luma Curve, and all this does is allows you to lower, lower or raise the saturation of different brightness values. Now, something I don't like about Color Finale is this should be switched. It should be Luma versus Sat. In Fonica Pro's color grading tools, it's Luma versus Sat, and Resolve, it's Luma versus Sat. I don't know why they switched that. But uh, nevertheless, you know kind of what this curve does. If you just click on it, you see that there's 
Uh, there's no color involved, so that means we're going to be affecting the brightness values. So let me click this dark circle right here, and that's going to select the very darkest parts of my image. And I'm actually going to extend this a little bit more. Whoops. And then make one tiny point maybe right here. So I'm going to be taking a lot of saturation out of most of my shadows. But what I also like about Color Finale is I can um, make it a lot more gradual than I can in Final Cut's tools. So I will anchor this point by pressing this, select these, and change these to a nice smooth uh, anchor. And that just makes it so we have a nice gradual roll off right here. So I'm going to pull that down. Let's see, maybe right about there. And if I turn that off and on, just look at his helmet and look at his vest. Notice how that is just taking out that gross green tint. So it just makes it more professional looking. So I can adjust that. I will rename it Luma and Luma versus Sat. And the last thing I'm going to do as a final adjustment, I am going to lower the exposure of my highlights because uh, in a lot of films, at least a lot of films that I've been looking at recently, the highlights sit so low. Uh, quite even quite even when you have like a blown out window like this the highlights are sitting pretty low now if I push it too low it's gonna look unnatural but uh, I'm just gonna push it down a tad maybe to about 80 so I opened up my curve and I'm just going to take the very high point and lower my highlights here now that does affect everything else that is pulling down my midtones so I'm just gonna push up slightly on my midtones that's gonna raise my midtones a little bit and then lower my highlights. The reason I like using my curves is because I, you can make things a lot more gradual than you can with the color wheels. I can, I can make things very precise, which generally you don't want to do. It's good to make very broad strokes rather than pinpoint uh, adjustments. But this, if I turn this off and on, this uh, just makes it a little bit flatter almost in a way. Actually, you know what? I don't like this. <laughs> I'm going to lower this down a tad and let's turn that off and on. Okay, so that just lowered our Luma values in our windows right here. That really is an adjustment. Maybe you don't need, maybe you want it, maybe you don't, but uh, I kind of like how that is. Uh, we're looking good on everything. If I pull up my range check, it seems like I am not overly saturated in my highlights. I'm not overly saturated in my shadows. Everything looks pretty even. The color looks good. So let's go over what we have done so far. And I probably could make a little bit more adjustments here, but uh, I may leave it as is. So if I turn all of these off, the first thing we did was add contrast and saturation to convert it to a Rec. 709 color space. Then we color corrected our shot. So it makes it easier to uh, stylize our shot and match different shots. Then we started to add a look and we adjusted our skin by desaturating it a little bit, give that kind of military war, Saving Private Ryan type of feel without the bleach bypass look of Saving Private Ryan. And then I took out the saturation from the darkest parts of my image. And I actually may uh, do another adjustment in this curves. This curves lowered the brightness of those windows there, just kind of brought the highlight exposure down but I may go to my darkest darks and just bring them down a tad and just lower those and then make a slight fade on this by pulling up on this. And that just kind of fades the, the very darkest parts of my shadows. So made it a little bit contrastier. That may be a little too much right there though. I mean, it's pretty dark, but yeah, maybe I'll bring it up a tad. I'll bring that up right about there. That looks pretty fine as is, I think. So let's lock this in. That's the look. And I'm going to show you how easy it would be to transfer it to another clip. So I will press, let's go into the corrections one more time. I'll press copy here. Let's head over to this clip. And this clip was already, i already color graded for the most part. But say I want to use the same grade. I can just go here, go to paste and then I can make some adjustments here. So uh, let's go into my layers and let's take off that first log direct 709 because this was already converted. So we take that off. The skin adjustment is what we want to adjust. So in this skin adjustment, 
we really desaturated the skin and here it's by the campfire. I'm going to raise that up a little bit more. We don't want it to be that desaturated. And actually that looks pretty good. Something I didn't do on the other shot, which I should, is lower the saturation on the brightest parts of my image. So let me hit this circle, which will then select the brightest parts of this image. And I'm just gonna pull down on the saturation in the brightest parts here, just lower that a little bit. And I think that should not only take out some saturation in his shirt, but also take out some saturation in the brightest part of this fire right here. So if I turn that off and on, it makes a small adjustment. If you look right in his shirt, right at his shirt, you'll notice that some of those areas become a little bit wider. So here's the look inside the car. And then we have this, which may be a little bit too saturated. So what I could do is head into my uh, sat versus sat curve in here. And what that's gonna do is allow me to um, take out the saturation in different intensities of saturation. This curve is, uh, is, uh, is very interesting because you have the most saturated areas on the right and the least saturated areas on the left. So if I head over here and just pull this down, it's gonna take out the saturation in the most saturated areas and leave saturation in the areas that are not that saturated. Uh, actually, one final adjustment. Let me go into the skin adjustment and I may take out some of the saturation in this, um, in this blue. So I'll head into the, the blue vector and just decrease the saturation here and you'll see that starts to pull out some of it. I don't want to go too much because they probably had like a, a, a LED light here, an RGB light that uh, made it look like moonlight. So we want to keep that true to what the cinematographer was going for, but I'm going to decrease the saturation quite a bit so we still have that faded look. So we still have the blue coming in, but it's not as intense as that. That looks like a little bit too much. And that is the look, guys. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. If you did, do me a solid and press the thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys in the next one.